Hi everyone, welcome to the Wednesday edition of Source 16 News. I'm Eddie Owen. Thanks for joining us. A local state legislator has been chosen to help lead a national online seminar on corrections reform. 8th District State Representative John Tilley, who chairs the House Judiciary Committee, says this is a tremendous opportunity to talk about what we as a state have been able to accomplish. Tilly of Hopkinsville will be joined by the director of Iowa's Department of Corrections and a member of South Carolina's Court of Appeals to discuss how public safety can be improved even in the midst of a budget crisis. According to Tilly, he took part in several similar conferences last year and they proved to be an invaluable resource when it came time to write a major reform of Kentucky's penal code, which moved forward through the legislature. He says, my hope is that this seminar will offer the same inspiration for leaders in other states. Many parents want to be assured their child's schools are safe, and the Kentucky Center for School Safety works to do just that. The center has released its 2009-2010 data for the annual Safe Schools Data Project, which breaks down disciplinary actions due to law and school board policy violations by districts. Disciplinary actions were reported in expulsions and suspensions based on two criteria. One, suspensions based on municipal laws being broken, and two, based on school board policies being violated. Christian County reported four law-violated expulsions with educational services up from zero reported in 2008-2009. One school board violation was reported in 2009-2010, also up from zero reported in 08-09. Trigg County reported three law violated expulsions in 09-10 up from zero previously reported. Four school board violations were reported up one from the previous year. Todd County reported two law violated expulsions without educational services in 2009-10, which is two more than previously reported. Meanwhile, Christian County's law violated suspensions were down by almost half in 2009-10, reporting 34 students were suspended for law violations. Previously, 60 suspensions were reported. Board violations are down also by 153. Caldwell County's law violated suspensions are down significantly, reporting just one student when previously 19 were suspended. Board violations are reported to be down by 257 as well. Callaway County reported three law violated suspensions down from eight in 2008 and 2009, but board violated suspensions went up slightly from 120 to 124. 31 law violated suspensions came from Graves County up from 16 in 08-09. Suspensions for board violations also went up 75 or went up 275 up 8 from the previous year. Hopkins County reported 40 law violated suspensions down slightly from 46 in 08-09 but school board violations are up to 1,302 from the previous year's 1,219. Ohio County's law violated suspensions remain the same with two, but school board violation suspensions went up to 33 from 19. Marshall County reported 35 law violated suspensions up from the previously reported 13. Board violated suspensions reportedly went down slightly from 267 to 255. Trigg County reported three law violated suspensions up from one the previous year, but board violation suspensions were down from 300 to 230. Finally, 14 students were suspended for law violations in Todd County. That's up from three in 2008-2009. Students suspended for board violations were reportedly down from 116 to 97. Only two school districts in our viewing area reported using corporal punishments. Caldwell County reported 22, while Marshall County reported five. If you'd like a detailed report, visit the KCSS website at KentuckySafeSchools.org. Six new members, including a well-known Hopkinsville publisher, were inducted into the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame yesterday. Retired Kentucky New Era publisher Robert Bob Carter was honored Tuesday at a Hall of Fame luncheon sponsored by the University of Kentucky School of Journalism and Telecommunications Alumni Association. In his career, Carter also served as president of the Kentucky Press Association and played an instrumental role in the efforts that led to Kentucky's Open Meetings Act 
passed in 1974, and the Open Records Act, which became law in 1976. In addition, Carter has served as president of the Kentucky-Tennessee chapter of the Association of the U.S. Army, as well as a board member of Leadership Kentucky, the Kentucky Development Finance Authority, the Hopkinsville Industrial Foundation, the Murray State University Board of Regents, and many others. Carter retired from the new era in 1997, but continued to serve as its board chairman until 2003. He was nominated for the Journalism Hall of Fame by New Era publisher Taylor Hayes. Well, last night, the Oak Grove City Council accepted a Rose Ed Estates stormwater agreement. The agreement, which is a requirement from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, requires subdivision developers to establish a stormwater monitoring program for injection wells. The wells are operated and maintained by the city. Oak Grove Public Works Director Bill Shadowen told Source 16 the agreement could require future residents in the subdivision off Kentucky 115 to pay an extra monthly utility bill of around $3 per lot. The measure would require the council's approval before any action can be taken. Meanwhile, Oak Grove's citywide spring cleaning event took place last weekend, and the council saw the entire community come together. City officials say the event was a big hit, and a total of five trash dumpsters were filled by the end of the weekend. Also, council members Tim Johnson and Shirley Gillespie accepted awards for the council's recent decision to pass the citywide smoke-free ordinance. An Oak Grove home was destroyed and another house was damaged by a fire last night. Oak Grove firefighters responded to the scene on DeSoto Lane off of Hugh Hunter Road around 650 last night. Firefighters with the Herndon and Pembroke Volunteer Fire Departments were also called to the scene to assist in fighting the blaze as well as utility companies to shut off services. In addition, Christian County Emergency Management Director Randy Graham responded to the scene and told Source 16 Jonathan and Amanda Carter reside in the home and were able to escape safely. The home was destroyed and the siding of the residence next to the house was damaged by the heat. Details of what caused the fire have not yet been released. Fort Campbell officials say an Afghan soldier was recently inducted into the Army's prestigious Sergeant Audie Murphy Club. Major General John Campbell and Command Sergeant Major Scott Schroeder held the induction ceremony to honor the ANA soldier for his bravery. Officials say the award was developed to recognize non-commissioned officers who made significant contributions to the Army. The Afghan soldier reportedly expressed his appreciation and vowed to continue serving his country. The induction ceremony was held in Logman province in Afghanistan. And the city of Mayfield is gearing up to send a shipment of care packages to some 101st Airborne Division troops. The city has been collecting personal items such as food, snacks, games, and more for about two months. They're now ready to send off their third shipment of care packages to their adopted unit, the 1st Squadron, 32nd Cavalry Regiment out of Fort Campbell currently serving in Afghanistan. Mayor Teresa Cantrell told Source 16 they nicknamed the unit the Bravo Troop and originally adopted the unit three years ago when they were deployed to Iraq through the Americans Supporting Americans organization. Cantrell said the next collection effort for the Bravo Troop will be in late June and July. In the wake of an F2 tornado causing extensive damages to T-Gasc on Monday, Hopkinsville City Council approved a contract to provide emergency and weather notification to area residents and made changes to their capital budget last night. As Source 16 reported at 10 o'clock last night, this uh, council members unanimously approved a 39-month contract with Emergency Communications Network Incorporated to implement an emergency notification and weather warning system called called Code Red for the remaining months of the fiscal year. And monitor weather warning system on an annual basis, which is the easiest way to explain this. The emergency notification system is a, is a call-based warning of really anything that we desire, that we desire or for those of us who have security passcodes to send a message out to all people who are registered with telephone masks. If it's a published telephone landline, you are automatically registered into the system. 
In other action, council members approved an amended budget that includes increasing the Parks and Recreation budget by $7,000, the Hopkinsville Police Department budget $22,000 for the purchase of a motorcycle, and the Administration Department's budget by $23,000 to purchase a vehicle for the mayor. The ordinance passed with Ward 11 Councilman Wesley Grimes and Ward 2 Councilwoman Kimberly McCarley voting no. Council members also established a no parking zone for Thomas Street, approved an operating contract with Ambush Soccer Association to create a youth soccer program and to provide concessions at tournament events. Wisconsin native Tom Wolf is now officially a City of Hopkinsville employee. Before the Hopkinsville City Council meeting last night, Wolf was treated to a reception in his honor to welcome him as the city's new public works director. According to Wolf, he's up for the challenge and says the city will benefit from his years of experience. Besides a number of years, which is 35 plus, uh, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've worked for municipalities, I've worked for private consultants. Of my 35 years in the business, I've got 30 years private and five years public. But in those 30 years of private, I served as village engineers, town engineers, a campus engineer for a local technical college. And I also represented developers before city boards and councils, and I've worked for the city councils and boards. So I've been on both sides of it. Over 35 years, you get a lot of experience. The reception was held last night at 5 at the Lackey Municipal Building. And now it's time for Hopkinsville Christian County Crime Stoppers Coordinator Paul Ray. Here's our featured Fugitives of the Week. This week, police need your help locating two wanted fugitives. Police are looking for 23-year-old Ernest Lee Poe, who's wanted for contempt of court. Poe is a white male who stands 5 feet, 10 inches tall, and weighs 170 pounds. His last known address was the 2300 block of South Virginia Street. Police are also looking for 19-year-old Keon Brooke Lacey, who's wanted on several outstanding warrants. Lacey is a black female who stands 5 feet, 8 inches tall, and weighs 190 pounds. Her last known address was the 100 block of North McPherson Avenue. If you know where police can locate these wanted fugitives, and we've got cash waiting for you. Pick up your phone now and call our tips line at 887 TIPS. If your information leads to an arrest, Crime Stoppers will pay you a cash reward. And remember, we will never ask your name, and you will not have to appear in court. Well, this week's Fugitive of the Week, I'm Officer Paul Ray for Crime Stoppers. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $218 million. Friday's Mega Millions jackpot, $44 million.